Now, um, just switching gears, um, just after the welterweight division with Spence and Crawford going on, I know you've always been big on Jerron Boots Ennis. You know, I mean, I, I actually sent recently the video to the, the team, so I sent it out. So, you know, they always post clips and stuff. Oh, I have seen that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, just, just why, why, why are you so high on Jerron? I'm just curious on an explanation. Man, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm just being honest. It's like if we was working with, if we was working with the young man, but he'd be on, he'd be on another level. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just being honest, and, and the proof is in the pudding on what we do over here. Yeah. You know, we, we know how to make stars, and he's, he's a he's a boxing star, but we could take him to a much higher level. But again, he's already working with somebody, and I don't want to, you know, um, violate any of that yeah. stuff. Um, much respect for his team, Pops, and everybody. But if, if they're ever free and they're looking to go to the next level, they know where to go. You know, um, mentioning the fact that you talked about you love Terrence and Boots, but um, do you think the Terrence Spence fight even happens now with all the, the stuff with Bomac and, and over there and then the rumors of? Steven saying it has to be at 147, and said it nice part. Steven Nelson spoke, not saying on behalf, like Steven I guess Nelson. Yeah, his was uh, that? he's someone in his camp, um, his sparring partner, someone who's like for who? Terrence Crawford. I never heard of whoever Steven Nelson is. I don't know. So he he made a statement on Twitter, kind of saying that they prefer to have the fight at 147, kind of saying that. Oh, we, so he speaks for Bud, whoever this person is. He made a statement. Oh, okay. So it's someone in his camp, sparring partner. He made his outfit design. So it's very, very close. Like a very, very close. Uh, I don't want to. Again, I don't know who this person is, but who yeah. has business people and, and who are knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know who this person is, but I don't have any of the details mm -hmm. um, that I could talk about. Fair. Okay. Yeah. But if. Just seeing the tweets that Terrence put out saying that I'm not want to fight Keith Thurman, I don't want to fight Danny. Are those kind of mistakes putting those type of tweets out? Well, uh -huh. from a standpoint of, let's see, I happen to know a lot more. Um, and I don't want to be critical, but just, you just should never say what you're never going to do. Mm -hmm. Just probably shouldn't, that's probably not smart to, to do that. You have one thing about him being. You know, top guy, he has options. But sometimes your options aren't what you kind of think they are. And this this is not applying, I'm not applying that to what he's saying, but I'm just saying that you, you want to keep all your options open. Because sometimes that you might put your eggs in the basket here and then somehow or whatever, that might not work out. Injuries happen. A lot of different things come up, you know, when you're trying to plan and make fights that they, they, just somehow that they don't, um, they don't come to fruition. You know, and just my final last two questions, um, just the whole aspect of, I know the fans might take certain tweets that he put out about, um, you know, PBC specifically, kind of like on the other side of the street I went and, you know, but he's essentially on the side of the street to make the fight. He's still a PBC fighter and all these types of things. Do um, you think fans, when they look into the fact that Terrence, who was predominantly built off top rank, still a PBC fighter in this aspect that these fights were made here and he still has the fight obligated to Well, I, I think Bud is a very straightforward guy. Mm -hmm. Um, and I actually kind of like the version of him that I see now he's talking more, you know, he's, he's probably, you know, a lot more comfortable than he was in the past. But and if he's honest, if he's being honest, I think that he knows that he should have been working with, you know, uh, PBC. And yeah. I mean, that's, that's fair. You think that was like more towards the fighters opposed to the idea of just, you know. I don't I don't know why he didn't work, you know, what with decision. I don't even know who his manager was mm -hmm. at that time, but that's water under the bridge. Yep. He's, you know, he came over and he, he got it done. Yep. You know, he had a big fight. 
you know, uh, in front of him, and he executed and did his thing. Mm -hmm. And nothing but the ultimate respect for him, um, what he did and what he's moving forward. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. And my last thing, um, I know that you have a, you know, a relationship with Broner and coming up with Matt, uh, Mike Stafford. I know that recently he passed, and you know, um, you know, he went on with like boozing. Talk, you know, emotionally about how important that was for him to have a, a father figure, trainer like yeah. that. Um, what, just the whole Mike Stafford and, and yeah, Mike was a good, Mike was a good dude. He did a lot for AB and all those guys. It's, it's a, a whole group of yeah. guys. I don't want to leave anybody out. Um, Robert Easter, Ross, you won yeah, all of them. A, yeah, he's done it, Mike was a good dude. He always showed me love. You know, just a good dude. I, I hate to see that. You know, life is so short. That's why we got to make the most of every single day. Happy being happy. That's the key. Well, look, I appreciate the time. Looking forward to this card. You know, you guys always do big things. I'm excited to see Tune court. in. Buy right now. Don't wait. Awesome. Thank you.